And the reason I didn't talk about uh, Mofuku here, the Mofuku is actually um, uh, very reserved uh, religious garment, uh, Mofuku. Occasionally, I mean, kimono, the idea is everything should be made of silk, that beautiful, shiny silk uh, in terms of fiber. But um, this kind of black uh, kimono, uh, you can make it out of cotton uh, or rainy, a little bit more toned down uh, idea. And then uh, the, the other, like below over here, these are very festival, uh, special occasion dresses. Um, so uchikake is the one you see on the top. So uh, for example, geisha or uh, wedding gowns, uh, you are going to wear your basic forms of kimono. Um, and then um, you can put uchikake on the top. So you can imagine how lavish it would be. Somebody had a furisode and then they put the uchikake on the top. So um, it's a fully dressed ensemble if you have a uchikake. And then Juni Hitoe is again only allowed for imperial family. Uh, so uh, you have layers of it. We, we are going to study this a little bit more. This is an older form of uh, imperial dress. And then currently, if you're getting married, you can um, try the Shiromuku, it means white gown. Um, so that you have that uh, layers of white um, uh, kimonos uh, and then the outer garment looks a bit like a uchikake, but made of white color. So it's going to be used for your, um, what is it, for your uh, weddings. And then on the top, you need a hat, special hat. Uh, so uh, that is the beginning of it. I mean, that's not all, but I wanted to have a little bit of a common understanding about the kimono. And then let's move to the second one. So uh, this one shows how you are going to dress up the kimono. But the kimono that, that we see, it, it, it literally means uh, wearing things, like a clothing items. That's what it says. Obviously, each one uh, has their own um, uh, terms. Um, so um, here, um, if you see this little cartoon on here, so um, out of kimono, you have a different uh, types of it. So uh, yukata, for example, is summer kimono, usually made of cotton or linen and uh, very thin one layer. So it's not as lavish as the silk uh, kimono. Yukata, it, it would look more like a, a bathrobe kind of thing. Uh, so you can wear it. And then uh, homong, uh, homong, um, it's a semi-formal uh, kimono, um, and you need that, um, do you see this like a block on your waist? Um, that is uh, called obi, like a obi sash. So kimono, just the robe, robe itself is not uh, complete. You need that um, robe together with obi, like that sash, so that's together. And then the OB is also a piece, a piece of cloth, so you have you need a tie. So that is uh, OB um, uh, and then OB jime. Uh, OB jime is actually a, a, a cord, uh, like a ribbon that ties. So you need three pieces at least. You need a robe itself made out of the textile, a very minimal stitching. And then the OB itself, you don't, you, it's just a short type of piece of cloth, but you need it to wrap it. And then um, you also need a cord, uh, also made of silk, beautiful cord. So three of them. Um, so you kata, um, you don't need OB. Uh, sometimes, um, um, sometimes you need a special OB, uh, but this OB does not have a cord. You can just tie sort of a very narrow ribbon uh, together and then tuck in, then it's just a complete. And then homong um, is a sort of a formal wear uh, that we see often. Uh, and then uh, furisode, um, they are saying that it's the long, long sleeve furisode kimono. And then juni hitoe is what we studied uh, just before. It's a it says Edo period, but it's not just Edo. It's coming from the um, 
hay and period, it's a, a very old form of a formal dress for imperial family. And uh, Juni literally means 12 layers. Um, so going to this uh, diagram, the cartoonish diagram, um, so you have that kimono or the robe on, and then you need um, the obi, the belt around it, and then you need uh, obi jime, like a, a sashi cord, so you tie it together, um, and then uh, you need shoes. So in Japanese, um, there are socks, so you need a socks that is called a tabi. Tabi is usually split into two. So you have, uh, uh, what is it, toe, toe, yeah, toe go in, and then the rest of them together. And then geta is a um, shoes for summer. And then jori is a formal wear. It's woven with that uh, straws. And then you have like a silk lining here. Um, so that is uh, sort of a platform shoes, a little bit higher. Uh, but in order to wear jori, you need socks, that is a tapi. So together, uh, it will complete the ensemble. And then geta is you can wear without the socks. Um, so it's a, a wooden platform shoes, geta. Um, and then uh, so that, you know, as we may remember, like that's the name of the sleeve. And then OB is a like a long sash, but it's more like a, a short type of a piece of large silk. Um, and then you have airy, that is the color that you see over here. Um, and then uh, the, uh, and then what did I want to say? Uh, ah, so in, in Japanese clothing culture, uh, especially when it comes to kimono, uh, wearing it is also a form of skill, uh, wearing. It is a skill. Um, so uh, in contemporary Japan, if you have to wear kimono for a high occasion, like a wedding or you know, going to somebody's party, those events, um, you should hire, often people hire uh, a kimono, um, stylist. Uh, in our world, it's a stylist, but in 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 the in the context, uh, they are the ones who, uh, like a sort of a couturier kind of thing. You don't have to tailor made it, but uh, just like the way we tailor made our clothes, um, in Japan, people who put the clothes on to other to another people, uh, that is very important skill. Uh, depending on who wears who put the clothes on you, um, your clothes look a little more uh, stylish and proper uh, than others. So um, it is hard for somebody to dress himself or herself. Um, so these are important uh, components of Japanese kimono. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about men. Um, so the men, uh, the male kimono is composed of some sort of pants. Uh, that is called the hakama. Uh, it is a loose uh, pants, so there are two legs going in. Uh, but from the surface, it looks like a um, it looks like what uh, skirt, <laughs> but it's a pants, loose uh, leg. Uh, so you need a hakama, and then you have like an inner shirt, right? Um, so um, you have the inner shirt kimono. So uh, here it says. Montuki kimono, like you need like a kimono uh, jacket, but inside you always have a little bit of a white color coming out. Um, so that is a uh, juban kimono, uh, means inner wear, like a juban kimono. Um, and then uh, in this case, you also have uh, like an outer jacket, right? Like an outer jacket uh, outside. Uh, Hakama pants or the, the waist uh, band, and that is a haori, actually it's called a haori. Um, so a montuki haori jacket, that is the uh, outside uh, jacket. So uh, you need at least the four layers. You have the juban kimono, the one, the white, right? Like a, something right, white one. Um, and then um, you have a montuki kimono, so that, that is a proper shirt. 
uh, tucked in to your hakama, like a pants, so that one, two, three hakama, and then you need haori jacket. Uh, but then there are, again, accessories that, you know, enhances your um, wear. Um, so that is uh, haori himo, uh, and then um, uh, that is like a tie. You are tying uh, your haori. Otherwise, it will just fall off, right? So you need a little uh, brooch or closure. And then uh, right inside the hakama, you also have a little bit of obi uh, and um, obi belt that you are seeing over here. Um, you actually have a both. You have uh, obi belt underneath and then obi belt outside. And then um, for a fully dressed uh, shoes, you need tabi. Tabi is the same. And then uh, men's sandal is called seta. Um, so it's a little rather flat, uh, not like Jori, uh, where you see a high uh, platform shoot. So you can see the shape a little different uh, between Jori and Seta. Uh, so that's how uh, you complete your look. Geta for the summertime, the name is the same. Um, so that is the sort of introduction to kimono that you should bear in mind. Uh, but 